Okay, so you're a chiropractor. You specialize with golf injuries, but what about the patient that goes to a chiropractor that doesn't have this specialized training with, uh, for golf injuries? But somebody goes in there with uh, low back pain. What are you going to do differently than a regular chiropractor would do? Well, we're going to add the component of looking at the golf swing. The chiropractor in the family practice, they are b going to be able to treat the back pain. But when their client or patient goes out to play golf, if the golf swing itself is not looked at, they have a continuing trauma. Every time they go out and play, they're going to be back in for treatment. So the doctors that have gone through the training that I provide also incorporate looking at the swing mechanics. Okay, tell me about that, by the way. I mean, you're a professional golfer and a chiropractor, so it's easy for you to help diagnose and treat a golf injury. Now, you, you speak to hundreds of golfer uh, uh, chiropractors throughout the country. So how, how are you able to teach them and relate this to golf? Well, I, when I was injured, I ended up uh, coming up with a, a methodology to determine whether or not I was out of position before I actually hit the ball. This is a concept that didn't exist previously. In other words, when a player goes out to play golf, they hit the ball, they watch it fly through the air, and then they make adjustments based on where the ball went. What I've done is found a way that I can have somebody take their swing, stop it at the top, and, and tell ahead of time if they risk injury by the position that they've got themselves in. So what are the root causes of these injuries then? Well, the root causes are being out of position. You're getting ready to exert a tremendous amount of physical effort to launch this stationary golf ball down the fairway. But if you're out of position before you exert that effort, you run the risk of putting strain on the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, and the joints of the body. So you could help anybody, any golfer that's watching this could benefit from this. You're saying that you could turn just about anybody, any golfer's game around or help them with their swing to prevent future injuries and also to keep the distance on the ball. We were talking off camera that as golfers get older, they lose distance. Correct. And why is that? Because the muscles began to get shorter and tighter. We lose our range of motion and therefore you can't turn far enough to hit the ball as far as you did when you were younger. So it's just a matter of teaching these people the right stretching exercises, bringing their flexibility back. That's correct. And, and do you think that the golfer then uh, blames it on uh, old age and they're just not as strong as they used to be? Old age, uh, the equipment, um, anything but their physical health. So they're misdiagnosing themselves. They are. They think it's the wrong. They're not looking at the flexibility issue. Is that what you're saying? That is, that is what I'm saying. A lot of people just don't like to stretch. It's not comfortable. It hurts. They, uh, they'd rather not. They'd rather do something else than work on stretching and posture. So there are great golfers out there that don't stretch, though. But what they're doing, you're, the way I hear this, is they're setting themselves up for slowly, slowly losing their game. Well, a great golfer is someone that's playing regularly. There's very few people that can come to golf on a weekend basis and play great golf. Anybody that's playing great golf, their time, their schedule is such that they're hitting balls a couple of times each week and they're playing maybe two or three times a week. The game generally demands that kind of attention. So because they're so actively involved in it, their muscles are staying loose and they have better okay. flexibility. So what makes one, uh, this seems like a simple question, but what makes one golfer more flexible than another golfer? Well, you'd have to understand the anatomy of how the body actually works and the muscles actually work. If you were to uh, take a microscopic look, you would see that there are fibers of muscles that are bundled together in okay. all throughout the body. But around this is like a spaghetti, uh, long spaghetti for people that are watching this. Long spaghetti. And if you looked at a, a, a cross-section of muscle under microscope, this is what it would actually look like. Okay. Around the spaghetti or the muscle fibers is a sheath we call fascia. When people stretch, what they're actually stretching is this fascial sheath. When they injure a muscle, rarely do they actually tear the fibers as much as they tear the sheath. When the sheath tears, it tends to heal up with a scar. And that scar left untreated and with enough time becomes what we call a trigger point. Therefore, when the muscles are asked to contract, when they're asked to stretch, if a trigger point is in the muscle fascia, then it will not lengthen. It's weaker. It doesn't have the elasticity and it's more pain sensitive. 
So when you find people that have a lot of trouble with their range of motion and their flexibility, often you will learn that in the history they've had injuries to their body or they've overstretched their body enough that this fascia is loaded with various trigger points preventing the muscles from stretching the way they need to. So what are you able to do as a chiropractor with people that have this scar tissue in the, from past injuries? How do you turn that around? Well, there's two things. First of all, and the best, is if you get these injuries early on, you've got a window of about four to six weeks. If you can get with a, a patient early, you can work with techniques to actually minimize the scarring and to prevent the formation of the trigger point. The scarring cannot be prevented, but the scar can become more functional so that the person won't lose as much motion. Unfortunately, most of the people that we see, these trigger points have been in place for a long period of time. So there are a variety of in-office techniques that we can use that can begin to break down the density of the trigger point. And then we have got to give patients things they can do at home so they can keep those soft and pliable so that when they go out to play, they don't risk re-injury. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're going to uh, also look at some of your clips that you have for these exercises to Im improve their game and to, to give them back that flexibility. You're watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're here with golf expert, chiropractor, Dr. Blanchard. We're talking about golf injuries, how to prevent them and the treatment of, of these injuries. We'll be right back.